G'day, I'm Paul. So one of the newest brands to Australia is a brand called Cupra. Look at that logo, it looks very scary. Um, this here is the Four Mentor, which is uh, obviously an SUV, but the top spec is like a sporty version of the Four Mentor. This is called the VZX. This competes with things like the Volkswagen T-Roc R, Audi SQ2, and stuff like the Hyundai Kona N. It's about SUVs that just wanna go fast and hard. So this is priced at just under $65,000. If that's too expensive, the entire four mentor range kicks off at just under 50 grand. So we're gonna do a detailed review of this car. So if you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen. If you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. That way you'll find out every single time we drive a white car. Now, let's talk about colors. You've got nine exterior colors to pick from. Four of those are standard, three are optional, and then you also have two matte colors as well. It's all variant dependent, so you'll be able to get some on some variants and some on others. Now the design, um, this looks sensational. When I saw this in the car park at work for the first time, I was like, holy crap, this is like, the design is just on point. This looks so much sharper than any other SUV in this segment. and. I don't know, to me it looks uh, from a distance like it is worth far more than the actual price tag suggests. So big fan of that. Um, down the front here, I love what they've done with that logo too. This is kind of a, a startup brand for, for the Volkswagen group. So they've gone a little edgy there in terms of the way everything appears here. And I think that it is, um, yeah, it is just a very cool looking setup. So a lot of piano black around here and the bottom section as well, radar down the bottom there. Our slimline number plates look kind of weird here given there's such a big gap there, but um, yeah, you'd probably get a Euro plate or something if you were buying one of these. Camera nestled in there as well for the 360 camera. Over here on the headlights, you have full LED headlights with an LED fog light just beneath it there functional air vent there as well, air vents rather, which is cool. Now, around the side here, you've got a set of 19 inch alloy wheels. Really like this design as well. Have a look at that. It's just a, a, I don't know, I love the fact that they've integrated that sort of, that rose gold color into there as well and the matte finish on the wheel, Cooper brakes there. Now you can actually get this with optional Brembo brakes as well if you wanna to go to town on, uh, on stopping power. So you do have a lot of availability there if you do wanna actually do something sporty with your car. A little bit of wheel arch cladding there as well. You're not gonna be going off road, it only has a ground clearance of around 160 mil, but the intention is there nevertheless. You have a camera built into here, you have a puddle lamp there as well. And in addition to that, you have an indicator built into that wing mirror, nice and sleek looking wing mirror too. Black around the edges here, roof rails there, and then come around to the back with me. You also have LED tail lights here as well, which look pretty cool. VZ badge there, and then you also have Cupra there with that logo as well, with kind of like a faux carbon set up on there too, which is nice. Uh, piano black down the bottom there, and then this gray section here as well. So let me know what you reckon about the design. Do you think it looks good? I think it looks fantastic. So let me know in the comment section below. So we are inside the four mentor. We'll start off with the key. So you've got lock, boot, unlock, and on the back you've got the Cupra logo. It's like a grippy material with a, a metal sort of edge to it. It's a proximity sensing key, so you leave that in your pocket. And then have a look at this, the start button is here on the steering wheel. How sporty is that? So um, yeah, in terms of the design, uh, I really like the look of this. So you get a big infotainment screen there that I'll run you through in a second. It's a bit hard to see on camera, but all of the highlights here, like the seats and these side panels on the doors are all like a dark blue. And that continues up along the dashboard there as well. It's just really nicely presented. It's a bit scratchy down the sides here, but outside of that, it kind of looks pretty nice. Um, I love the seats, like they just look sensational. You got this extruded uh, Cooper logo at the top there and they just really hug you in quite nicely. So we'll see what they're like when we go for a bit of a spin. But yeah, on first impression, all of this looks fantastic. Um, now, what about your touch points? So that's not too bad there. Not too bad on the door as well. How soft are they? Well, I've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. All right, build quality. That is all very nice and solid at our door slam test. And just for fun. Yeah, sounds nice and solid. So let's talk about infotainment. It is a big, impressive screen. Look at it sitting up the top there. So 12 inches in size. You don't actually have any physical buttons though. You do have this stuff underneath. I'm not a huge fan of this. And I've mentioned this before in Volkswagen reviews that having to slide your finger around this stuff is just a bit clumsy. You can go to the screen and do it here as well, but I don't know, 
it's one of those things that would just be good if um, there was just physical buttons here. Uh, same story with the volume, you can slide your finger along there or use the steering wheel, but no sort of physical knob to make it all happen. Outside of that though, um, it is a pretty good infotainment system. So you have inbuilt satellite navigation. You also have the ability to configure all of these displays to show different things. So you can set all your shortcuts down the bottom here. It also has gesture control. So as you get closer to the screen, you can swipe your hand across like that. And it, um, actually, it doesn't work too bad. Sometimes these things don't really work that well, but um, it's all sort of pretty straightforward. In terms of smartphone connectivity, you have both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This is what Apple CarPlay looks like. It's entirely wireless, nice and quick and snappy there as well. And this is Android Auto. So this is also wireless, full screen integration there. Nice and quick as well. Uh, on the radio front, you have AM and FM radio, but if I go over here to the sound system and we put some music on, you don't actually have digital radio, which I find really strange. It's only AM and FM, so it's a little bit uh, disappointing, but you do have a nine speaker Beats branded sound system that isn't too bad. There is also a display here ahead of the driver. You can configure a lot of stuff in here as well, which is great. So you can flick between different screen menus there. You can then configure everything that you can see in there as well. So it should be a bit of fun to play with when we actually go for a drive. Now let's talk safety tech. So you've got autonomous emergency braking. You have an auto dimming rear vision mirror. You've got a blind spot monitor built into this little lit up section up the front here. You also have front and rear parking sensors. You have rear cross traffic alert. You have a lane departure warning with a lane keeping assistant. We'll have a little play with this later on uh, along with radar cruise control. You've got a 360 camera as well. I'll show you what that looks like in terms of the quality. There it is there. Quality is really not great. It's a bit sort of grainy. Uh, let's have a look at the back. You can read what it says there, but yeah, you can see it's super grainy around there. But you do get a number of these little views which do come in handy, which is great. And you also have a semi-autonomous parking feature there as well. A little trailer view, which is cool. What else have we got here? And then an ultra wide angle as well. So yeah, not a bad setup there for parking. I think camera quality could just be slightly better. And this is what the horn sounds like. What about your practicality? And we'll start off with connectivity. So you've got two USB-C ports down the front here. You've got a wireless phone charger. 12 volt outlet snuck into there. In terms of storing your phone, you can kind of pop it anywhere. Um, you can live down there on that wireless charger. It doesn't quite fit into there, but it does fit into your cup holders and stuff. Um, what about your coffee cup? So here's our little coffee cup. I've actually got a small sized hole up the back there, so you can fit that in. If you go down the front there, you'll end up getting de-littered. Uh, bottle fits in nicely as well without any problem. There are no teeth, but because it is a deep hole, it sort of swallows it nicely. Um, fits inside the door as well. We'll try our big bottle. Yes, that fits in as well, which is excellent news. In terms of other storage, you have a center console here that's okay. It's not huge. That does slide front and back. And then you also have a reasonably sized glove box there with a very randomly big section up the top there. Moving on to comfort, you have dual zone automatic climate control. You've got heated seats here for the front row. You have a heated steering wheel. In terms of seat adjustment, you have electric seat adjustment for the driver, manual for the passenger. The driver can go forwards, backwards. Backrest can go forwards, backwards. You can lift the front of the seat, the back of the seat. You also have lumbar adjustment and memory as well. Seats are super comfy. Just have a look at them. They just hug you in really nicely. The steering wheel sits nicely in the hand as well with a flat bottom on it. So paddle shifters there too. Steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment. And on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Yeah, second row. Um, I'm actually surprised by the amount of room here. Normally with big sports seats like this, they eat into leg room for the second row, but this is actually not that bad. And I've got the seat pretty far back. So knee room's good, toe room's good, headroom is good as well. In terms of your creature comforts back here, you've got map pockets in the back of the seats, a third zone of climate control, two USB-C ports with air vents, center armrest here with three cup holders. So you've got one up the front there, smaller one at the back, and then a little piccolo holder there as well. You also have a ski port here in the center to give you access to the rear. As required, you've got ISO fixed points on the two outboard seats with uh, top tether points as well. Um, now, what about our window test? Let's see if it goes down. So it's auto up and down. <sighs> so close to going all the way down. Okay, cargo space. Let's have a little look. So you have 
420 litres available here. It's actually not a bad setup. It's quite wide. You have this high boot lip, but it does store things in there and stops it from falling out if you're on an incline. Under here, you've got a space saver spare. This is where they integrate the subwoofer as well. A little bit of storage off to the side there too. Some hooks as well. I'll show you what it looks like with our bags in there. So we'll see if our suitcase fits this way. Not quite, but uh, you can go sideways and it still affords you a fair bit of room. Um, now, you can also drop the second row from the back, which is good. You flick these levers, away that goes, and away that goes as well. We don't have a figure for your bigger boot space, but it is a fairly handy storage space. So we've just hit the road in the four Mentor. It's worth pointing out that these are closely related to Sayats and Sayats are within the Volkswagen group, which is why you'll notice a whole stack of stuff that we talk about here is probably going to be fairly common to other vehicles in the Volkswagen group. Um, so the engine, two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine makes 228 kilowatts of power and 400 Newton meters of torque, which is fairly healthy number for a pint sized little thing like this and that's all routed through an all-wheel drive system. So it's one of those ones that predominantly sends torque to the front wheels, but can send torque to the rear wheels when there is slip on that axle. Now it is interesting as we're sort of driving along here, I did notice at low speeds there, it is just a little bit clunky and that is that standard dual clutch setup. And under the bonnet there, you've got a seven speed dual clutch. When I roll onto the throttle, it kind of has to slip the clutch a little bit and then it has to start getting moving. You're going to notice that most when you are reversing up hills and that kind of thing, a lot of brands are moving away from dual clutch transmissions and I'm wondering whether Volkswagen's going to end up doing the same because uh, ultimately I think a torque converter is a much smoother option and I know that they use these for fuel efficiency but ultimately it is just going to be a better option if you do want that comfort behind the wheel. Okay let's talk fuel economy so uh, Cupra claims just under 8 litres per 100 k's we are currently sitting on 10.9 so significantly more than that um, and that's been with a mix of um, city highway and then uh, driving here at the proving ground so it is a little higher than i thought it was going to be it's not the end of the world given this is a sportier vehicle but um, yeah a little bit higher than i thought it was going to be now what does all that feel like behind the wheel let's give it a little stab here yeah it's really good look 400 newton meters of torque is a really nice and healthy amount it means that you really are going to feel it when you do get stuck into it you can sort of use the paddle shifters here as well to move through those gears if you want and then in addition to that you also have a sport mode that you access just by pulling that down and you can see changes to sport mode down the bottom okay time to attack our sine waves here in comfort jack the speed up to 130 k's an hour which is the maximum speed limit in australia and about the speed you're going to be doing if you're overtaking that kind of thing so there we are there here comes our sine waves Oh, it's great. That is really, really impressive. So this car uses adaptive damping, so they really have sort of calibrated that beautifully because when you're in and around the city and um, even on these sort of country roads, it is soaking bumps up beautifully. It is um, on the firmer side of comfortable, but it really isn't over the top. It's really quite nice and comfortable. So done a good job with that. And with the adaptive damping, it means when you are in comfort, you're getting the benefit of a really nice ride without it being too intrusive when you hit those bumps. And we've got our really bumpy, nasty road section here where you get to see all of my man boob related items shaking around. <laughs> so we do this at 90 k's an hour. This represents a terrible country road and we've got our condensed sine wave here as well. Yeah, it's actually doing a really nice job here. So this is an absolutely appalling road, but like I said, it is on the firmer side of comfortable, but it is soaking up everything really nicely. So yeah, it's a very impressive ride and handling tune. Now let's go for a bit of a drive. So the button here on the steering wheel lets you switch between your drive modes. You've got individual, sport, comfort, off-road. I reckon we'll go to Cupra. Um, that is the sportier of the settings. It turns engine sound on, I like that. Puts it into sport mode. Look, it's actually not too bad. Yeah, the sport mode, um, the noise that's coming into the cabin is pretty cool. Sort of not over the top. The ride gets significantly firmer in sport mode. Uh, sorry, in Cupra mode. Actually, hammering. Wow. 
quite impressed by this. It is moving along with a fair bit of pace and it's got stacks of traction as well. You can lean on the throttle through these faster corners and it's pinning us nicely back in the seats. The brakes don't feel amazing. I think this is probably where if um, you're going to be doing any track driving or anything like that, you want to be going down the path of the optional Brembo braking system. But outside of that, this thing is absolutely hammering. I'm really impressed by this, so where are we going here? Wow, it is stacking on that speed. That is, that is bloody good, very impressive. Sound like there's a fair bit of road noise in here and um, I'll have to look at our figures once we log on our calibrated sound meter but yeah I think there is a fair bit of noise coming in through the cabin here especially on these coarse chip sections of country road. Now let's talk about visibility. Um, it's, it's a really interesting driving position. You sit quite low even though it's an SUV and the bonnet sits quite high so you're in a position where you kind of feel like you're in a in a hatchback but are looking sort of down the front there, which I really like, and um, yeah, the steering feels really nice when you're going for it as well. Uh, visibility out the side is good, the wing mirrors are big enough, visibility out the back isn't great, it's a very narrow envelope, but outside of that you've got all your parking sensors and cameras and stuff to make parking pretty straightforward. So uh, let's do some testing of the semi-autonomous systems here. I'm going to set the cruise control at uh, 70 k's an hour. And then once it's set, we're going to put this travel assist feature on, which is designed to keep the car uh, within its lane. We're going to test our three outer lanes. So this one, the next one, and then the furthest banked lane. Whole concept here is that if a car is able to hold itself within the lane and apply enough torque, it's probably going to do the same out on the road as well. So uh, lane one here, everything looks pretty good. It's sort of staying over to the left a bit, but sort of doing an okay job. Jump over to this next one. See what it's like here. So that's now active. Yeah, it looks like it's basically just trying to keep you away from the line as opposed to centered. So it is doing an okay job there because we haven't crossed the line yet. Some of the systems we've tested before that are actually meant to keep you centered have crossed the line entirely. So it's okay there for that second lane. We'll try this top lane. We have had issues here with Volkswagen group vehicles before, but this looks like it's working fine. I'll just slowly let go of that wheel. That's uh, crossing the line there, so it's not really interested in applying enough torque to make that happen. So yeah, it's a pass in lane one and two and a fail for lane three there. I think it probably needs a proper semi-autonomous steering function to work uh, in this type of testing. Okay, let's do some performance testing. So I'll slot this back into Cupra mode. I'm going to set the stability control to ESC Sport so we get a bit of slip off the line. Now, Cupra claims a 0 to 100 time of just under five seconds. So I'm going to give this a crack with launch control and we'll see how it goes. So launch control is pretty straightforward. Your foot is on the brake, hard on the throttle. It'll say launch active and then we let go of the brake and away we go. So here it is, launch active, let go of the brake. Oh, that is good. Go all the way through to 120 as well. Wow. This thing is bloody quick. All right, we'll come to a stop and we'll have a look at our performance figures. That is impressive. It really pins you back in the seat there. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so, zero to 100 comes in at 4.94 seconds. So pretty much bang on the money. 80 to 120, 3.2 seconds. That is seriously quick. Very, very impressive there. All right, uh, let's go do a break from 100 k's an hour and see how quickly this pulls up for us. Okie dokie, let's get up to 100 k's an hour. And we'll come to a stop and see how that goes. 90, there's 100, here we go. Oh. So 100 to zero, 2.64 seconds and 36.17 meters, that is unreal. So yeah, look, some really impressive figures there. If you do wanna see how the Cupra 4 Mentor compares to other cars that we've tested before in terms of performance figures, have a look at the link in the description below. We're slowly building that page out, but we'll give you an idea of how it performs. And now time for our <laughs> reverse acceleration test. Here we go, we're in reverse. It starts off quickly and then it caps out there at 32 kilometers an hour. Um. 
Okay, so Cupra 4 Mentor. This is probably one of, I don't know, the most surprising cars I've driven this year. It is just such an exciting package. It hammers harder than I thought it was gonna hammer. Uh, it's got plenty of room inside, lots of the latest tech, and it looks absolutely sensational. So it is expensive, I think, uh, when you look at how much you're gonna pay for this. It is really getting up there, and that's for a brand that you may not have ever heard of before. So uh, you are gonna be paying for it, but ultimately, if this had literally any other badge, you'd be like, oh my God, this is such a good all-rounder. So um, I really did struggle to find any downsides with it. So let me know what you reckon in the comments section below. Have you driven one of these? How did it go? Did you enjoy it? I'm keen for your feedback. Let me know your thoughts. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you share it with your mates and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon but until next time take it easy